What's up guys, today I'm gonna to give you five key tips on how to run your best half marathon ever, so get ready. So when it comes to running your best half marathon ever, what we're really talking about is arming ourselves with the right tools, the right conditions, the right setup so that we can really have a good race. When we talk about that, we're gonna talk about five things. We're gonna talk about running form and mechanics. We're gonna talk about strength, what we need to do for strength training. We're gonna talk about building our running stamina and speed, our ability to handle those higher paces, those longer distances without breaking down. Uh, the ability to, what am I thinking about here? Our ability to uh, be around a coach and uh, have coaching and uh, have a community around us to really help us out in our, in our running and, uh, and also really telling us when to follow the plan and when not to follow the plan. That's really important. Of course, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about injury prevention as well. So we have those five things we wanna hit about. Now the first one I wanna talk about today is our running form. And there are a lot of different ways we can get into good running mechanics. I've, we've done a lot of videos on that. You can definitely search our channel. But the specific thing I wanna talk about today is our ability to pull our feet up off the ground. It's so important to be able to pick those feet up because it speaks of a few things. A lot of times when we get tired, we get into that marathon shuffle where we're barely picking our feet up off the ground and you may be that person, especially when you're tired, that you fell flat on your face and when you looked at what you tripped on and it was a pebble about this big, you all of a sudden you're like, oh man, how did I not get my foot over that thing? It's crazy, it's, it's happened to me too. And what happens when our pulling goes away, our ability to pick our feet up off the ground goes away, is usually a general sign of just, I'm here. I'm tired, I'm not breathing as well, my shoulders have rounded forward. It's like the universal white flag. We can see that we don't have to be an expert in biomechanics to read when someone is fatigued. They're yawning, they're a little slumped, you just see they have no energy. And what happens is when I'm here, I can't really pick my legs up off the ground because my hips aren't in a good position, I can't engage my hamstrings and my glutes very well, so that becomes part of the problem. I can reverse engineer this and turn this ship around by forcing my body to pick up my heels with a little pulling exercise. What that does is it forces me to be a little bit more upright, to pull a little bit more easy, which gets my shoulders back, which gets me breathing better, which gets my arm swing better, which gets everything going better. So that's why we're doing this pulling drill. And what I want you to do, standing tall, you're going to split the difference between what a high knee looks like, so your knee's coming way out the front, and a butt kick where your heel comes way out the back, and we're going to go right in the middle. And all you're going to do, standing tall, is just 10 on one side. And you can kind of check just to make sure this is right in the middle. I'm then going to go ahead and do 10 on the other side, once again splitting the difference between a high knee and a butt kick here, right in the middle. You may notice when you do this fast that your body wants to lurch down, keep those hips forward. If my hips stay underneath me and I pull, I'm usually pretty good. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just jog in place and I'm gonna alternate picking my feet up off the ground just a little bit and I'm gonna emphasize pulling on one side. Once again, when you're tired, it starts to look like this or my hips aren't in a good position because my hips are going backwards. Keep your hips forward and when you pull, everything stays calm. I'm gonna do 10 on this side, I'm gonna switch over, 10 on this side, good. And then I can even alternate pulling both sides back and forth. If I can start to do that, that's really gonna help me out. Once a week I should be working on drills anyway, preferably even more. If I add some of those pulling drills, fantastic. If I'm on any one of my longer runs, you know, every 10 minutes, I am going to work on some drills. I'm gonna slow down, maybe I'm gonna stop, I'm just gonna run down the road, focusing on pulling high on one side for 10, pulling high on the other side for 10, pulling both sides high for 10. That's gonna get me upright, get me in tune with my running form, I maintain better running form for all my workouts and all my runs, I'm gonna be way better for my half marathon. All right, our next thing is going to be improving our running stamina. So we talked a little bit about mechanics. The next thing is blending into my half marathon program at least one or two days where I'm working on my ability to run stronger or to run faster. Now, the best way, the safest way to introduce speed is hill work. If I can include some hills, especially early on in my training, 
it actually is a great way to reinforce uh, my posture and my running form because it forces me to take smaller steps up the hill. It's impossible or very difficult for me to overstride when I go up a hill. It really does a great job in engaging hamstring and glutes, the whole real wheel drive I like to say which is so important for running. It gets that force production occurring and it really starts to take our strength gains that we've worked on other days, which I'll talk about in another section, and bring to our running. So some hills that are 30 to 60 seconds long are perfect. I would like to start with say five by 60 second hill repeats, walk, jog back down, maybe build up to 10 over a couple weeks, and then you've really given yourself a nice foundation to then take your running strength and uh, really translate that into gains later on down the road that is gonna turn into faster half marathon running. Uh, I'm gonna show you some hill tips uh, in this next little segment here that you'll see, uh, but that's gonna be the most important thing. Can I get that hill running in? All right guys, before we talk about strength training, we're gonna get into some lunges. I wanna tell you about this comprehensive half marathon training guide that we have created and uh, we wanna give to you. All you need to do to get it, and this includes tips on everything from how to approach your training, how to build in technique work, what happens if you're injured, what should you do if you're you know, tired or sick, everything we thought that you needed to know about your half marathon, we put it in this guide. All you need to do to get it is click this link in this video. If you happen to be on a mobile device, there's a link down in the description below. This is gonna take you to a page once you're there, you enter your name and your email address and you'll be able to get that guide. Get it, it's so worth it. Now, back to strength training, I wanna talk about lunges. Now, I really believe, we really believe in whole body strength training for runners. Runners need to be athletes, they need to be well-functioning human beings, and running is just too limited of a range of motion of an activity to be sufficient alone, especially if I am a computer jockey, a desk jockey, or any other type of work-related jockey that doesn't move that much. Running is this very limited range of thing, and as we get older, our strength tends to go away, our range of motion tends to go away, and then all of a sudden these like little weak uh, points start to come out, and that's where we get into trouble. So we can work with a lot of different things, but I'm just gonna show you a lunge, which is so helpful. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, when I step forward into this lunge, I'm gonna face forward first. I wanna maintain a nice, you know, semi-wide stance to give myself a little bit of balance. I'm gonna drop down on this back leg. I'm gonna step forward, or step back, sorry about that. Step forward on the other leg, drop down here. Just back and forth, just some lunges. I'm nice and upright. And what I like about this lunge is a few things. One, it challenges my balance in the split stance a little bit, so I'm getting some benefit there. It's taking me through some range of motion. And what's so great about these lunges is that I'm really working on hip extension out the back, opening up my hips, and being really strong through the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes. And this strength is gonna help me stabilize my hips and have a strong, powerful stride in a body that's gonna be a little bit more resilient and injury proof later on down the road. The other thing in terms of little points of performance with our run, with our lunge, I wanna step back far enough so as I drop down this front shin's very vertical. This keeps my knee nice and aligned over my ankle and what I wanna avoid is lunging in a way where my knee goes way forward or if my knee goes forward and in. This is where things get kinda ugly. If you're that runner who takes a step every time and this leg collapses this way, we're just opening ourselves up to different potential mechanical faults. I could get IT band issues, my knee could be bothering me and be irritated in different ways, I could have issues with my shins, my calves, my Achilles, my plantar fascia, kind of everything. So we want nice alignment. That alignment with my strength is going to be here. Our workout is gonna be this. It's gonna be five by one minutes of walking lunges, where basically for one minute, I'm just gonna lunge forward, step, lunge forward, step all the way for one minute as I go. The bonus challenge is gonna be five by one minute of jumping lunges, which is gonna be kind of brutal. Where I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna jump, switch feet, drop down, jump, switch feet, drop down, jump, switch feet, drop down. A challenge, I know, I want you to take a one minute break in between those things, but if I can include, whew, so I'm talking a lot here, I'm running out of breath, if I can include things like that at least twice a week, it's gonna keep my body nice and strong, moving well, so when I go back to running, 
my body's gonna be a lot more happy, it's gonna be able to take all that pounding and the abuse, and uh, it's gonna keep me running for days, weeks, months, years ahead. Okay, our next piece, guys, is going to be uh, on injury prevention. I'm gonna show you how we can be best friends with things like a trigger point roller, or hey, even a glass bottle. Uh, but I know some of you guys aren't always able to go to the end of these things, so make sure if you like this video, let us know, hit that like button, and if you have any comments or questions we're doing, hit us up in the comments, we'll definitely hit you up. Now, with these foam rollers, they're such important tools for our running because as we start running and pushing ourselves, we're starting to beat our body up. We're starting to put way more miles on the car than the average person drives, right? Than the average person runs. We're starting to double and triple those miles in the same amount of time or less. And you better believe that things are going to start to stiffen up and get tight. And I wanna burst your bubble right now, I'm sorry to say it, but injuries really don't come out of nowhere unless you hit, get hit by a taxi cab. If you watched our videos, you've heard of me say that before, but it just is one of those things we constantly have to reinforce. So what we need to do is get ahead of injuries by checking underneath the hood and trying to see, hey, what's tight? You know, we worked with, uh, you know, some physical therapists and other friends who really believe that normal, happy, healthy human tissue should feel like, say, pressure. Let's say I'm foam rolling my calves for a second, but it shouldn't feel pain. So if I start to get on one of these things and all of a sudden something's a little tight, a little off, well, you better believe that I'm working hard, my calves are working hard because I'm doing all this extra running, I need to give them a little love. So the main takeaway from this, I need to run, every time I run, I need to give myself 10 minutes of, of mobility work a day, and that's really the bare minimum. And I can use different tools at my disposal, but one of our favorites is a little bit of soft tissue work. Now, I have my water bottle out here for a few reasons. Number one, I don't always have this beautiful, swanky trigger point foam roller with me, but I might have a coffee mug with me, or a wine bottle with me, or I just so happen to have a Pellegrino with me here too. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this instead. And I'm gonna to start to use this to roll my calf, and all of a sudden I'm like, well wait a minute, I didn't feel too much pain on this, but this is like that next level. All of a sudden I get on a smaller, harder surface, I can dig in a little bit better. And that just goes to show that I need the right tool for the job. Sometimes a lacrosse ball is gonna be better if I wanna get into my glutes. Sometimes if I've got a bigger surface area, I'm hitting with a lot of body weight, like my quads, a softer roller is gonna be a little bit better, uh, or the water bottle is perfect for my calves. But I need to have that injury prevention practice. I need to do it for 10 to 15 minutes a day. I've already upped it five minutes in me talking about this. And uh, I need to do it before I feel pain. That's so important. So all you healthy runners out there and you're watching this, start to regularly add this into your schedule and it's gonna make a huge difference in your ability to train through your half marathon. It's gonna keep you ahead of those injuries before you get hurt in the first place. Guys, our last thing we're gonna talk about today in terms of you running your best half marathon is creating the proper community and uh, coaching support around you to, to really be successful. And here's the deal. We value the runner who wakes up super early in the morning and trains really hard by themselves, the solo person who achieves all these great things, but in reality, no one is successful alone, right? We need a village, we need a community to support us because guess what? I've rarely met the runner who has nothing bad happen in their life. They don't have any dips, right? It's kind of not a matter of, of if, but when, and it's more how we deal with those situations that keeps us running happy, healthy, and consistently. So for example, if you're someone who's dealing with a little knee injury and you're by yourself, how do you know if you should rest tomorrow or if you just train through it anyway and uh, just kind of like hope, hope for the best that it goes away? Well, if you have a place where you could ask that question and some other runner could be like, hey dude, I did that you know, and it didn't work for me. Really rest and not only just rest, do this one you know, exercise, do the couch stretch, foam roll your quads a little bit more, pay attention to your cadence. All of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, now I know what to do and I know that I'm gonna be better. Say you have got a bigger injury like a stress fracture and you're in this 
down in the dump situation, you know, talking to another runner who said, you know what, man, I had a stress fracture last year. It was the worst, but there was this opportunity in there where I was able to work on these other things I neglected. And hey, look at me, I'm back running. You're gonna be able to get out of this thing. It can give us that right level of encouragement we need. And the other thing, guys, is this. We need a little bit of coaching. Now, that coach doesn't have to come from you know some, some person way up here. A lot of times it can come from our peers. It can come in that level of encouragement and support. High five, you did a good job today to, hey, you know, I'm on this training plan. This training plan tells me that I need to run X amount of miles on hills tomorrow, but I've got this little bug in my throat and I feel like it's coming in my chest. Should I run, yes or no? We have to be good at navigating through all those subtle situations that can really have big effects on our ability to be healthy and get to the starting line. So having that coaching community and that community of other athletes around you is so big, I can't uh, reinforce it enough. And uh, hopefully you can find one online. We've created one with a lot of our running programs that really helps and reinforces those runners. But there's a lot of great places you can do it, including local running, uh, running clubs and uh, workouts as well. Hey guys, we got one more thing for you. Uh, if you like this video on half marathon training and how to run your best half, we have a downloadable complete guide, all you need to know about training for that half marathon, ready for you, all you need to do to get it is to click this link in this video. If you happen to be on your mobile device, don't worry, there's a link down in the description that's gonna go ahead and take you to a page. Once you're there, you can put your name and your email address and we'll be able to send you that downloadable guide. And guys, we put everything we thought uh, we thought of about running, strength training, injury prevention, training, how to adjust your training, what to do if you're sick, what to do if you're tired, what to do if you're undertrained, all that stuff into that guide. It's so valuable, so we definitely want you to have it, and it's for free. All you need to do is enter your name. Um, and if you like this video, go ahead and let us know. Hit that like button down below. If you had any comments or questions on those different areas we hit today, hit us up in the comments. We'll definitely get back to you if we can. Uh, if you like these videos and you wanna see more training around half marathons as well as strength training, injury prevention, you gotta to subscribe to our channel. We are pumping out material all the time just for you. Uh, and all you need to do to get it into your uh, daily schedule is hit that subscribe button. And guys, once again, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.